Hi guys, this is not financial advice. This video is a quick tutorial on how to get started if you have a graphics card sitting in a gaming computer somewhere or uh, multiple computers that you want to see if you can make some extra money uh, quickly and not necessarily take it out but generate Ethereum so that maybe one day you'll open up your wallet and Ethereum will be worth $10,000. So the first thing is we need to determine if our graphics card is powerful enough. If you have a 20 series or 30 series NVIDIA card or 6000 series for uh, AMD, most likely it is profitable. Although not as profitable as it was, we can still see the profits and how to, do, how to set it up. So the first thing is we're gonna go to what to mine, which is in the description below. This tells us all the graphics cards and their different hash rates for different algorithms. In our case, we have one 2060, and we wanna see what that's going to do for us uh, over a week. We're gonna select the 12060 here and click calculate. Keep in mind that these calculations are the base for the graphics card, meaning I have a 2060 Super, which actually generates a lot more mega hash than what it said here. We also are going to be overclocking slightly, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put in 43, because that's what I get, and we can take a look at the calculation for this, and we see that it's $2.54 here for Ethereum, uh, $2.54 per day, and that obviously is around $65 to $70 a month. So now that we've determined that this is profitable for us, even with the, uh, even with the kilowatts per hour electricity costs, and we know that we can run this in the off hours, we're going to need to get a wallet. The way to get a wallet, and the most common one used in North America, is Coinbase. It's in the description below. So we're gonna sign up for an account in Coinbase and go through the step-by-step -step instructions. So we're gonna sign up for an account. Here I'm creating an account, custom computing, with my email address and a password. So I'll create account, and there we go. Now that we have our logged in, we're going to have to verify the login with our email, navigate to your email address, select the validation uh, link, and now we get to go in and we need to set up our two-step uh, factor authentication. This is a must. It's like any other wallet. You should have two form factor authentication because this will be containing your money. I'm gonna enter in my phone number now. Now that I've entered in my phone number, it sends me a text that I need to just put into here. And submit. Now we're going to select our region. I'm in Canada. Most of you are probably in the United States. Hit select. Now we're going to be entering our identification. So here you do actually have to put in uh, the information that you want because you're going to be linking this to your bank account eventually so that we can extract funds from it. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my information offline. The next step, it's going to ask you to verify your identity. So we're gonna be using a passport, a driver's license, or a national ID card. Go ahead and select the one of your choice. You can upload it through webcam, file, or uh, mobile camera. For the mobile camera, you're going to need to download the Coinbase app, which is in the description below. Go ahead and upload a picture of your driver's license or ID, and it will move forward with the next steps. Okay, once we've uploaded our driver's license, it's going to say verifying your documentation. They'll send you an email once it's verified. Uh, it took no time for me to get verified, uh, so it all of a sudden says I'm verified and I can set up my bank account. So this type of stuff we uh, is up to you guys. Input your credit card or your bank account. You're going to need something to be able to extract the money from Coinbase. I say put it into a, a debit card terms, but we're just going to proceed to Coinbase without adding a bank card so far. So skip for now. Now that we've entered Coinbase, I already have some coins in here that I've earned through my rewards. However, we're going to click send and receive. And if we want to find out what our Ethereum wallet address is, is we're going to click on receive. We're going to say, uh, we're going to say turn on instant transfers. And this is our Ethereum address. So we're going to need this for later. We can copy this to the clipboard, but for now we're just going to leave it open here in this website. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a pool. So the way to determine if you want to, what pool you want to mine to, go to this website in the description below. Here's the top list of all of the pools available. 
Each one of them has a different payout system. Not different, but the top one is Ethermine, meaning that it has the highest hash rate, meaning it's the most popular. It has the most compute power out of all of them. If you go down, you can see other pools here. A lot of them have a pool fee. Hiveon, uh, Hiveon does not have a pool fee, uh, which is why I select it. It also, all of them have a minimum payout. You have to reach 0.1 Ethereum in order to get paid out. So let's go take a look at Hiveon and take a look at why I chose it. Selecting Hiveon, we can see that the daily expected amount per 100 mega hash. So we already did the calculation over here. Right now I'm at 43 mega hash. So it's probably $3. That's probably about just a little under half of this. So around $3 Ethereum uh, per day. We're going to take a look down here. They pay a minimum payout is 0.1 Ethereum, meaning we have to mine 0.1 Ethereum in order to get that back. And they pay the transaction fees and there's no pool fee, which is why I select this pool. Now that we have this selected, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the best mining softwares. So I looked at this review quite a while ago. It may have changed. However, I chose to use Gminer. So we need a piece of software that's going to convert our GPU power into the ETash, which is the Ethereum, and put it onto the network. So we're going to download Gminer, which is here in the description below. So once you click on this, you're going to see a zip file for Windows. We're going to open up the zip. We're going to extract it to our desktop. And before we extract it, we're going to have to add uh, an exception into our <clears throat> Defender. Because there's an EXE in here, the Windows Defender is probably going to pick it up as a virus, so we need to disable that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new um, folder on the desktop. We're going to call it Miner. I'm going to enter that. Now we're going to go to Windows Defender. Scroll down here to the hidden icons. Click on Windows Security. Click on Virus and Threat Protection. Click on Manage Settings. Scroll down to the bottom and we're going to Add or Exclude. Right now I'm going to add an exclusion, which is going to be an entire folder. Go to our Desktop, Miner, Select Folder, and it's added here. So now when we extract, we're going to extract our Miner that we're just about, we just downloaded to that folder open up the uh, zip that we just downloaded, extract to, desktop, miner. Okay, there, we've extracted it and we're ready to run with Gminer. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna download MSI Afterburner. This is gonna give us full control over our graphics card, meaning the fans and the power supply to it, as well as its overclock ability. We're gonna go click on the description below and download MSI Afterburner. Once that's done downloading, we're gonna open it up, double click on Setup, and once it executes, click OK, Next, I accept, Next. We are going to unselect Riva Tuner because we do not need this. Next, Next, Install, and Finish. Once it's finished, we're going to open up Afterburner and take a look at the settings to make sure that it starts up every time we boot up Windows. Now that Afterburner is installed, it minimizes to the system tray. So we're going to show hidden icons, click on MSI Afterburner, and this is what pops up. We're going to then click on the settings here, start minimized, start with Windows. Personally, I like to change the interface because it's a little bit cleaner. I scroll to the white Drex. Drex can't even say that word. Uh, apply, hit OK. Here's our uh, GPU settings. We're not going to take a look at this just yet. We're just going to minimize this. Now that we have Afterburner installed, we're going to navigate back to our desktop where we extracted our mining software. We're going to go into this and we're going to right click on mine underscore eth. There's several different other bat files here, but the one that we want to focus on is mine underscore eth because this is just mining Ethereum. And so right click, click edit, 
this is going to give us a string here and it only has two important things the first thing is the server meaning which pool are we going to be connecting to we've chosen Hivon so we're going to go back to our Hivon URL scroll to the bottom and it has a list of all the geolocation URLs we're going to be doing North America West <clears throat> actually let's do US East so I'm going to copy that go back to the notepad and we're going to paste it in top of this URL here control V if you take a look back here the port is 4444 very easy to remember so we're going to change this port to 4444 the next one is our user address so we're going to replace this delete with our coinbase address so again we're going to click log into coinbase click send receive we're going to click uh, receive this is our ethereum address if we were going to receive other coins we can select this and we can receive those other coins but our ethereum address is this one here which we're going to copy this to clipboard go back to the notepad and paste now that that bat file is saved we're actually going to double click on it and it's going to start mining keep in mind we're doing everything at default settings there's no uh, overclock on this we can take a look at that by clicking down here to the right click on MSI afterburner and these are all the default settings we'll be modifying these shortly uh, after we take a look at how we're mining and where we're mining to so in order to find out how we're mining and where we're mining to it will show us the address in here uh, in the bat file you can see that the host and the user that's our address are both up at the top so we know that we're going to the proper location and we also can see that we're generating 32.5 mega hash per second at default we're going to navigate back to the Hiveon pool. We're going to paste in our address that we just uh, had in the bat file. Click explore. This is our. This is going to be our uh, our page of information. It tells us what we can expect per week, how much mega hash reported in real time, and what workers we have, and the payouts. So right now, in order to get paid out, we need to mine. 0.1 uh, Ethereum, uh, which we do not have right now, and uh, you'll be able to see that as time goes on. Right now, what we want to do is we want to increase our um, our graphics card power. So currently, we're sitting at 32.7 mega hash. Let's go into our afterburner, and typically, what we want to do is we want to set this power limit down to 55%. You can go to 50, uh, some, some graphics cards won't let you go lower than 71 because that's, this is a small form factor computer, but typically you wanna go to 55 or 60 on the power percentage limit. We're going to deselect the temp uh, connection here. I'm gonna set that to 80 degrees. 80 degrees is a very safe uh, temperature for a GPU to be running. We're gonna take a look at the core clocks and in fact, we don't want anything to do with the core clocks, so we're just gonna bring that all the way to the left, which is negative 502. The important one that we wanna look on is the memory clock. And this is the one that we're gonna be playing with uh, in order to get our clocks up, our speeds better. So first, what you're gonna probably do is start off with 500. And then you're gonna click, okay, apply. Let's change the fan settings to a, a constant 70% fan setting and hit apply. So right now we have just 500 megahertz uh, increase on our memory clock and a negative 500 megahertz decrease on our core clock. If we take a look at this, we can see that the temperature is up to 72 degrees, which will drop because we've lowered the power limit down. So you can see that the temperature has now dropped to 64 degrees our fan is sitting at 70% and we're up to 33.5% on the mega hash. 0.1 Ethereum here, as it goes up, it will then get deposited on the payout day, which is on the, I think it's the, yeah, it says here the payments are made at 2.33 a.m. GMT for all balances above 0.1 Ethereum. So once that hits 0.1 Ethereum, then we will see a deposit into our Coinbase account 
and it will show an increase here of 0.1 Ethereum and then you're off to the races. So that's the start and finish of how to get started really quickly with mining. If you have a spare gaming computer sitting around, you can take a look to see how much it'll generate. This, take this for a very, very default value. Uh, it says that there's 30 mega hash for the 2060, but I'm able to get it up to 43 mega hash. So keep that in mind that what you see here is definitely undervalued of what you could probably do and keeping the temperatures down as low as you can. Lowering the power limit to 55 is more than acceptable for every 3000 series card that I've had. And you can play with the memory clocks up to 1500 or even more, uh, depending on what you feel safe with and if there's any errors that start popping up you can lower it down i hope this helped you go from zero to hero with the cryptocurrency and good luck mining send some messages down below if you have any questions there's a lot of advanced topics that i did not cover here today this is just the base so thank you hope you enjoyed it bye bye